today we have a talk and a kind of uh, demonstration, presentation of a, a kind of a framework for uh, simulation, a framework for simulation which enable uh, users to run applications and to guarantee something what is a kind of uh, reproducibility. It is, uh, the talk will be given by Piotr Nowakowski and by Marek Kasztelnik. The floor from uh, Sano Center and uh, uh, Cypronet. So floor is yours, go on, please. Okay, so welcome everybody. And uh, thanks for tuning in to our weekly seminar. I hope it will be worth your while. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be presenting um, an environment, a technology stack, a, uh, a solution, which we refer to as the model execution environment. Uh, don't worry, it's a, I know it's a convoluted name, but I will explain what it does and what, what it's good for. Um, it is um, an environment we have been working on uh, for, for some time in the context of several different research initiatives, and it is still under development. And uh, we uh, believe that there is, um, uh, substantial op there is a substantial opportunity in the context of sano to uh, integrate and uh, expose the features of this environment to our uh, to our domain scientists the people who actually do the science in sano so uh, as marian already uh, announced my, my name is Piotr Nowakowski and i will be co-presenting uh, today with my colleague marek kastelnik we're both part of the same team uh, initially at uh, uh, the Academic Computing Center Cyphernet in Krakow, but are now all, we also uh, work within the context of SANO. Um, and our role as uh, uh, software developers, scientific developers, scientific programmers, uh, and in my case also a data scientist, is to bridge the gap between the high performance research infrastructure, uh, computing infrastructures, and also data storage infrastructures that uh, are operated by HPC centers, not, not just at Cypronet, which is uh, one of the major HPC centers in Krakow, but also at our partner institutions in the framework of several different uh, research, collaborative research projects on the one hand, and on, uh, on like I said already, on domain scientists, on people uh, representing uh, various fields of medical research, uh, biological research, um, uh, uh, high energy physics, astronomy, you name it, basically. So we have uh, historically uh, had collaborations with a range of uh, um, research teams from various disciplines who, for one reason or another, required access to um, high performance computing and large scale data storage infrastructures, and also required a convenient way uh, uh, to be able to perform computations and make meaningful use of those resources. Now, obviously, HPC resources in themselves are a, a bit difficult to use for, for a layman. Um, so we try to um, facilitate their uh, use by those people who are more interested in the, in the science side part of things and not so much interested in uh, IT uh, minutiae. So, the model execution environment, which I will be presenting today along with Marek, is uh, uh, one of our attempts at uh, bringing together those two disparate worlds. Uh, and I would like to begin by telling you a little bit about how it came to be, where it came from, what the motivation was for the development of this kind of system. Then I will uh, briefly go over the, um, the, the, the actual uh, features of the environment, tell you what you can accomplish with it, what, what basically what, it, what it's good for. Uh, and I will provide some uh, uh, examples of how it uh, operates in the context of various projects, and also, also uh, you know, thinking about its potential use in SANO. And uh, we are going to wrap up with a live demo of the infrastructure, which as I've said already, will be presented by Marek. But that's that's in a couple of minutes. <laughs> First, you're gonna have to sit, sit through the presentation. Uh, so, the genesis of the model execution environment. Now, this is this is a tool that um, was devised in a project called Eurvalve. Some of you I know who are attending this presentation uh, 
were part of that project. So you can you can skip that part. You can go make a cup of coffee or something. But uh, I think for for the others, it would it would be useful to to explain a little bit about what this project aimed to do. Um, this is a project that uh, aimed to develop a decision support system that can be used in a clinical environment to make decisions uh, regarding inter interventional procedures in cases of uh, valvular heart conditions. Uh, basically. Patients report to a hospital, they are di diagnosed with uh, some kind of um, anomaly, disease or deformity affecting their heart valve and the, the, the attending doctor is faced with a question of, well, what to do about it, what the optimal course of treatment is. Now, uh, there is a wide range of treatment options available to such patients. Uh, not all of them are invasive, but in some cases, uh, surgery has to be performed. Some patients require prosthetic heart valve implant. Um, and so, in order to be able to make an informed decision uh, uh, regarding the preferred treatment option, the uh, physician uh, is given access to this decision support system, which uh, takes in information uh, that comes from uh, uh, tests performed on the patients, um, imaging information, imaging data, along with some, some ancillary stuff like you know, age, body mass, uh, lifestyle habits, and, and such and such, and then proposes um, an optimal treatment option for that, for that particular patient. Now, in order to be able to develop this system, we uh, also had to create uh, what we refer to as a research computing infrastructure, because the DSS itself is a tool that is intended for use in the hospital. We had a, we had a commercial partner in the project, Philips, uh, who were actually in charge of developing that tool. Um, but the, the DSS itself uh, does not have access to extensive computational power. It certainly cannot schedule computations on HPC or, 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 or have a vast uh, set of data at its disposal. So um, in order to uh, make it operational, uh, the goal of the project was to pre-compute a set of models, analytical models, that could be fed into that decision support system. To, to, to enable it to work. And in order to pre-compute those models, a lot of computational work had to take place. A lot of computational effort was required. Now, the, the, um, the, the, this slide essentially uh, tells you the, well, what we are faced with, the problem that we are faced with in a, in a sort of a research scenario where you can run, like, say, for instance, a full computational fluid dynamic simulation for a specific heart shape and then extract uh, results from that and, 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 and interpolate that and uh, obtain results showing that, for instance, how a uh, given procedure is likely to affect the, the blood flow in the patient's cardiovascular system. Uh, but this is something, like I said, that you can only do in a uh, given access to a, not only large-scale computational infrastructures, but also some proprietary software uh, that enables those CFD simulations to be run. So this is the research side of things. Now, by crunching a um, number of representative patient cases, we are able to produce what we refer to as a reduced order, order model, um, which can function in a clinical scenario without the need uh, for these HPC resources. So basically the problem with your valve is, okay, we need to compute this, uh, uh, re prepare, develop this reduced order model on the basis by, by running a large volume of CFD simulations for various hard geometries and uh, extracting data from that. And in order to be able to run these uh, simulations, we had to create an environment whereby a, a a clinician, a, cl a researcher with uh, you know knowledge about cardiology, but perhaps not so much knowledge about IT, will be able to access the large computer scale computational resources required to perform a range of simulations. Some of them really complex, as you can see in this next slide. This this is a typical simulation flow involved in this uh, in this research scenario. You see, we have there are a lot of steps um, and. Uh, a lot of computations take place at each step and, and you have a lot of intermediate results. This has to be organized. And not only do we have to run this kind of simulation for each individual representative patient, we had, a, we had like a cohort of patients, uh, retrospective patients, what we refer to as, uh, which means that people who have already had their treatment done, but we have their data, we can uh, sort of feed it into this uh, 
um, into this analysis pipeline and see what comes out on the other end and compare that with the actual outcome uh, of, of treatment for each given patient. So you have this whole range of computations that have to be managed they have to be performed, uh, executed using HPC resources. And these, these take a long time. So an environment is needed that keeps track of all this data and also is able to, uh, well, organize this, um, this research scenario in, in a way that is meaningful to the end users. In this context, to uh, organize it or sort it by patient ID, we had a number of patients. I'll, I'll explain it. Uh, in detail when I get to the UI uh, side of, of things. So, so the model execution environment, yeah, this was a fairly long digression, um, is a tool that enables us to plan, deploy, and execute complex uh, computational pipelines that consist of multiple steps uh, uh, and present them in a way that is easy to access for a uh, for, a for a researcher, for a domain scientist, and uh, also abstracts away all the complexity that uh, has to deal with, uh, you know, invoking, the, making use of computational resources, accessing HPC infrastructures, you know, security related issues, um, and all that. Um, so, in order to uh, be able to present this solution or, or, or come up with something that works for the end users, we, we had to build an application stack that uh, at the top provides a graphical user interface that is well, hopefully easy to understand and use. And uh, beneath it is capable of, beneath that layer, it's capable of scheduling computations and various types of computational resources and also drawing data from various types of data sources. So uh, in the context of Eurovalve, we rely on the Prometheus cluster, which is the main computational cluster uh, at uh, deployed at Cypronet, one of the fastest uh, computing clusters still in, uh, in, in Central Eastern Europe. Um, and there are a there's a bunch of technologies that work behind the scenes to enable us to run jobs on this infrastructure, to make use of the computational resources that are provided to us. Uh, also in terms of storing and retrieving large volumes of data, which may be needed by some of the computational steps. And um, in, our, in addition to, uh, to that, we also have a repository of computational models. So like, for instance, when you run a computation or, or develop a computation, you, it may so happen that you need to iterate uh, over uh, something that you have written before as a developer. Uh, it res results in a situation where you have multiple versions of the same computational steps in order to enable, you know, uh, pro provenance tracking and repeatability, repeatability of results. We also have uh, facilities which enable us to track and monitor multiple versions of a given computational pipeline or step. Uh, and this is done with the use of versioning tools such as GitLab. And on top of that sits a user interface, which I will briefly describe and then Marek will run a live demo show using uh, actual uh, use cases, you know, show don't tell as they say. Um, right, the, so what the, uh, after this fairly long introduction, what the goal of uh, the model execution environment is, uh, just to sum it up, is to enable re repeatability of computations. You can uh, execute, uh, or um, the, the same, a given computation multiple times um, and to, you know, work in that manner. Also discovering the differences between, uh, between the uh, individual iterations of a given execution. Um, you have repli replicability, it, which, uh, by which I mean that once a computation is developed and or pi computational pipeline is exposed, it can be reused by different teams uh, in order to obtain the same artifacts. And finally, reproducibility. So uh, a situation where an independent research group uh, may obtain the same results using artifacts that they develop themselves, artifacts in this case, computational models and data. Right, uh, a few words about the architecture. This is uh, more of an IT centric view of the platform. Uh, this is what we like to refer to as a scary picture. I know. It 
there's a lot of interconnections here, a lot of boxes. Uh, but the, the, the main takeaway from that is that at the top you have the works, uh, you have a researcher who interacts with the system via a workstation. We provide a user interface uh, with um, that is accessible through a web browser. And this is the primary means of interacting with the environment. Although it can also be interacted with using CLI tools and uh, dedicated APIs. So you can, for instance, write your own application that interacts with a model execution environment and schedules computations for executions. You don't have to go through the UI, although in most cases we will. Um, below that sits a layer of services you know, that uh, are capable of talking to various types of computational and data storage infrastructures, schedule computations, monitor their progress, feed results back to the user through the UI, and, and perform all the ancillary functions that you expect in this sort of system. So, so logging, performance monitoring, uh, availability tracking, and, and so on and so forth. And at the bottom, um, lies a layer of HPC and storage resources. Various types of technologies are uh, supported by model execution environment and we are working to provide support for additional technologies as they become popular. I will, I will refer to that later in the context of com containerized computations. So um, in terms of operation, it's a simple matter. Um, you log into the infrastructure, you select a given uh, um, case or, or study that you uh, intend to work on. And we also provide access, uh, provide support for multiple organizations. An organization should be regarded as a team of people working in the context of a separate project. So for instance, your Valve was an organization. SANO is an organization, although multiple organizations can be defined also within SANO. Each organization has their own resources um, and their own uh, uh, members. So they, they sort of don't overlap with one another. Uh, within the context of an organization, you have uh, access to a certain range of data that is available to that organization and a set of computational models that are, have been developed for that uh, organization. We call them pipelines. So you select the pipeline to execute, uh, provide input data if the pipeline requires. So the ME um, model execution environment supports, uh, for instance, parameterization of steps where, where, in, where your researcher uh, executes a computation, they might need to provide some initial parameters arguments. Um, and this is also, uh, there is also a UI developed for that. And then you click execute. Uh, your pipeline is uh, scheduled for execution. Now it, uh, a pipeline may consist of a single step that is a single computation, or it can, it may involve multiple computations which communicate via input and output files, wherein the output of, a, of one computation is, serves as the input for the subsequent computational step. There's uh, no limit on the number of steps that can, uh, can be uh, uh, defined. In, in Eurovalve, we had uh, pipelines that consisted of, of six separate steps. You, you saw the, you know, the, this, this complicated chart before. Uh, that's an example of that. But you know, it may very well happen that a single step is, is enough for a given pipeline. Uh, and in, in that case, you will be um, dealing with uh, just a monolithic computation. Um, um, the execution environment tracks the progress of your computation on whatever resources it has been scheduled to. It in informs you what the status is, uh, whether it's been you know, queued for execution, whether it is running. Uh, note that we are dealing with uh, computations which may take a long time on, on the order of hours or even days to finish computing. So, so this, this information is important. And uh, once it's done, you also get a information that you know your 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 computation is done, and here is the here is the output, here is the data that has been produced. You can download it, you can uh, visualize it, and uh, uh, hopefully it'll help you do you know do science. <laughs> um, this um, this uh, this slide basically summarizes the core features. I've already gone through most of them, so. Uh, I will not dwell too much on uh, on this issue. Um, we have reproducibility, as I've already said, pipe versioning of computational steps. So you can have multiple versions of a of a given uh, step and execute uh, any one of them you you, you like. Uh, you have we have support for multiple uh, organizations, as I've already said, each with their own set of resources. We have automation of uh, simulation pipelines with a human in the loop. So, so as the person executing the pipelines, you can, like I said, you can supply your own input data and supply your own input parameters as well. 
Um, we have data persistence features, so support for various storage mechanisms um, uh, and visualization of results. Uh, you can download or visualize your results in the UI. Uh, you can also compare the results in some cases. So there is a slide that mentions that uh, further down the line. And portability, this is a you know, browser-based interface, so you can access it from, from, from any compatible device. And like I said, you can also, uh, there is also a RESTful API for, you know, for, for programmers to make use of. Um, now, this is, uh, this is where we start to uh, delve into the specifics of the user interface. Marek will, uh, like I said, run his demo later, so all this will be uh, made clear or perhaps more clear than what I can achieve just by talking about it. Uh, but yes, uh, there is a, uh, once you log into the environment, you are faced with a panel which you can, uh, where you can access various options, various act actions that, uh, that uh, this uh, environment supports. You can run uh, computations, you can organize them. You, some uh, users also have access to administrator tools where they can manage, um, define a new, uh, uh, pipelines or pipeline steps uh, where they can manage their teams and the resources that are available to them. This is perhaps not uh, crucially important for uh, for uh, every researcher who just who's just interested in the in the data, but uh, but for administrative purposes, this is something that needs to be provided and in fact is. And uh, there is also information regarding the uh, interfaces that the platform provides, the RESTful APIs and. Uh, and uh, various ancillary tools, uh, as well as uh, a documentation system that you can review um, if you so choose. Um, this, um, the, oops, sorry, I got uh, some pop-ups happening, but don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, this is uh, um, an environment which, like I've said already, has been undergoing evolution uh, in a couple of research initiatives now. Um, and then so the, the user interface evolves along with it. This is the latest version. Um, you ha uh, this, this screen shows a, a representative situation where we have a number of patient cases defined. This is obviously anonymized data. Each of those boxes corresponds to a specific patient. This is, this is in the context of the Eurovolve project uh, where a patient, patients are anonymized and assigned IDs. And as you can see, there is a, it's possible to execute one or multiple computational pipelines in the context of each specific patient. So with access to that patient's data. Um, and the, uh, the, inter the environment informs you of the progress of these pipelines. You can see those, uh, those bars here where the green lines co correspond to computational steps that have already been completed. Gray ones are yet to be completed. There are also some other colors possible, but uh, I'll not <laughs> get into too much detail here. And this is like uh, this organized view of um, your, your, your research project. Now, the I keep referring to patients, but the environment itself is generic. Whenever you have a study that can be compartmentalized into, into distinct pieces, um, uh, subjects of whatever nature, then this can be support, uh, supported by the model execution environment out of the box, so to speak, even though we don't deliver a boxed version, because who does, who does nowadays? <laughs> um, so, um, once you've obtained your output data, there are tools that enable you to compare the outputs or outcomes of two pipelines. Uh, and as you can see here, this is like a side-by-side -side comparison of the results of a computation that was performed with uh, different sets of input data. So it, it is commonly the case that you uh, carry out the same computation for different types of input data and you want to know what the difference in the results was. So uh, ME visualizes that both in terms of a graphical uh, interface and also uh, whether when textual data is uh, um, generated by the computations, the, the environment can also highlight the differences uh, between the outputs of two different simulation runs. So, so this, is, this is a useful feature. Now, uh, pipelines, computational pipelines can be edited uh, it is possible to, like I've already uh, hinted upon that, uh, it is possible to define in new steps and compose them into entirely new pipelines. Now, in order to be able to define um, uh, a, a pipeline and a, uh, sorry, a computational step, you need to basically tell the system where the executable resides 
because every every computational step is, is is built around an executable file in whatever you know, com programming language you uh, you you want to write. Um, once that is available, you can sorry. Phone, phone is ringing. Everybody wants a piece of me today. Uh, once you've defined your step, you upload it into a, a repository. Uh, uh, we, we provide support for GitLab, and then you can define, you can tell me, I mean, where to look for it, and the, the environment takes care of the rest. That is, then uh, the environment can take that executable from the repository, uh, stage it uh, in, in into your HPC infrastructure, execute it, monitor its execution and provide you with results. So this is like a dynamically configurable environment that you can adapt to suit the needs of your specific uh, uh, research task that you have to perform. Um, um, as I mentioned bef uh, before, this is perhaps not that interesting for the uh, for the non-gear heads <laughs> among you. Uh, there is a RESTful interface where you can uh, uh, command the environment to do various things programmatically as opposed to via the uh, via the user interface the, the GUI uh, and we provide documentation for that also in uh, within the uh, the application itself uh, uh, there are certain security related issues that go along with that um, perhaps not worth getting into too much detail on but uh, whenever you know whenever uh, exposing the whatever we're talking about exposing the capabilities of a high performance computational environment it is important to be mindful of all the security constraints that go along with it you know we don't want to people hacking in uh running malicious code uh i don't know digging for bitcoins or whatever <laughs> on our hpc infrastructure so security is uh is, is covered also by the me uh there is a bunch of interfaces that uh, serve that purpose. You can define groups, you can define users, you can set their privileges, and and so on and so forth. So so all that uh, you know is is, is available. Um, the platform was always also comes with uh, a range of uh, availability and also accessibility monitoring options. Basically, we have services that check whether the platform itself is in good shape, with what the health. So to speak, of the platform is whether there, you know, there, there, there's there is a risk of you know resource exhaustion or or, or perhaps a non-responsiveness of the platform, and uh, they issue appropriate alerts to system administrators because you know this this is a live system that is used for actual scientific research. So obviously we don't we want to solve problems, not cause them. <laughs> uh, so so these tools are useful for us as administrators of the platform. Uh, like I said, responsive availability and responsive monitoring is um, is covered with a range of monitoring tools that, again, perhaps not that interesting to to, to discuss the specifics of those here. Uh, and that's uh, that's the state of uh, uh, of the platform as it uh, sort of emerged from uh, the uh, Year Valve projects. Now. We have been able to process this this range of patient cases for um, for for your valve. Like I said, fulfilling the the stated purpose of being able to compute the uh, the reduced order models for the decision support system that I've that I talked about at the beginning of the presentation. So this is a system that works. Um, it uh, you know, all those like I said, computations can be repeated. You the, the the data is there. You can you can run the pipelines. Uh, and it's a it's a live platform that provides this uh, feature. And obviously, once Eurovolve concluded, we we uh, sort of came to the conclusion that this this is a gen the solution is generic enough that you know it doesn't only have to be uh, applicable to this specific uh, area that is valvular uh, the diagnosis and treatment of valvular heart conditions, but in in fact it can be equally useful in uh, in a range of other applications. And so um, this. Uh, Development, further development of um, of the infrastructure moved on to a project which is currently ongoing. It's called Primash. This uh, Marek here is sort of the lead on Primash. So, if you have uh, uh, specific questions regarding that project, you will perhaps be able to address them. But this is um, again an environment to support a personalized diagnosis of uh, cancer, uh, certain types of types of cancer that 
involves uh, automatic analysis of various types of data, primarily Im imaging data, uh, and also uh, development of machine learning models that can be used to perform automatic reasoning on the basis of uh, uh, of the available information for various uh, specific patient cases obviously with uh, uh, sort of um, with the expectation that you can derive useful recommendations regarding treatment um, so um, now as we moved on to uh, primash um, this uh, this is a project that uh, Mm, follows Eurovalve by I think that the, the, the time elapsed between the beginning of Eurovalve and the beginning of Primash is four years I believe and uh, you know IT being a perpetually evolving discipline uh, a lot of things happen during that time on you know on the on the IT side of things now we we observed uh, uh, ongoing popularization of container-based solutions for computations where wherein instead of uh, writing an executable file and, and having it uh, or, or compiling an application and uploading it somewhere for execution, we now see uh, the drive towards uh, uh, developing and packaging uh, what is known as containers, basically self-contained self uh, uh, pieces or, or how should I, how, how best to describe for it for a layman, uh, self-contained, virtual computational environments that that encapsulate a specific uh, functionality a specific feature and containers have the great benefit in that they can be uploaded to any kind of uh, uh, computing infrastructure and you can expect them to provide exactly the same uh, functionality whether running in an hpc uh, uh, system such as here or when running in a computational cloud or even on your own laptop so uh, this this containerization of computations is uh, is an ongoing um, phenomenon that we felt compelled to respond to, and uh, so this is uh, one of the major directions of uh, research and development uh, in the context of the model execution environment. We are trying to develop a solution where, instead of you know writing this uh, these, these directly writing these scripts that are uploaded to HPC, you instead uh, uh, upload or, or point the environment to where your containers reside. There are various technologies that support that, of course. Again, perhaps not uh, important to, to, to get into the details, but this is uh, an ongoing research effort. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in summary, we have a solution that you can directly use to make use of high performance computational resources, distributed computational resources, also data storage. Uh, you can execute uh, uh, applications, uh, computational tasks and pipelines in an organized manner on these resources with you know, all the security constraints respected and such. Um, and uh, you can perform uh, your scientific studies with, with minimum fuss in terms of you know, having to interact with low level IT infrastructures or, or command line tools. and and all the, all the things that may be a little bit cryptic for, for a domain researcher who is more you know, on the application side of things. There is obviously ongoing work. Um, as I've already hinted, we are uh, working on support for containers. Uh, there is also uh, work on ad supporting additional versioning system, currently GitLab, but we are working on extending uh, this to GitHub as well. Uh, we're integrating additional data storage mechanisms <clears throat> and uh, uh, we are continually improving and expanding uh, the, uh, the user interface to you know, respond to the feedback obtained uh, from our users. So I guess this brings us to our demo scenario, which Marek will be presenting. I just have a brief summary. I don't know, Marek, do you want to go through perhaps this, uh, this bullet points or will that be part of your live uh, I presentation? We can do it during the live demo. Okay, so well, uh, we are going to sort of start at the beginning. That is, uh, define a new organization within ME, and then execute computations within the context of that organization, and, and show you how these computations can can be executed, how the data can be manipulated, and and how the results can be um, uh, obtained and uh, visualized. Um, I guess that's me. Uh, sorry, that's it from me. Um,
So time to move on to the live demo, I suppose. All right. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, can you just see my screen? I believe you do. Uh, uh, so uh, my name is Marek Kastelnik. I'm the main uh, author of the model execution environment. And during the second part of the presentation, uh, I would like you to show uh, the model execution environment in action. <clears throat> uh, so uh, uh, as Piotr already mentioned, the model execution environment allow you to start the calculation on the high performance computing uh, in uh, easy way and in a sustainable way and in a repeatable way. So you can uh, repeat your calculation, repeat your calculation from, uh, from your colleague and uh, you are sure that you are running the same uh, version of the model uh, that was used to produce some results. Uh, so during this uh, demo, we'll be creating a new organization. This is a collaboration space where the researcher can work together to run a calculation on patient data. <clears throat> and uh, during this demo, I will be showing you very simplified uh, pipeline, which is composed of three steps. Uh, the first one will generate a set of numbers. The second step will sort this number. Then third one will do some visualization. This is done for purpose. Uh, for you just to focus on tool, not to the, on the computation itself. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll be showing you the re real uh, results uh, from the error valve. So yeah, then you can uh, focus on, <laughs> on the medical aspect of the model execution environment. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> the model execution environment is hosted in Cypronet, so you can enter uh, to the system by using the me.cypronet.pl URL. And everyone who has uh, access to uh, to the PL grid infrastructure uh, can uh, start a new organization, can start the calculation on Prometheus uh, high performance uh, computing. So let's try to create a new organization. Uh, let's call it, for example, the uh, Sano Seminar. Uh, so uh, by clicking uh, this create new organization. Uh, a uh, very simple uh, form is presented where you need to provide a basic information about the organization, such as name. Next, we need to provide an information how to uh, connect into the uh, storage where the source code of the models uh, are hosted. Uh, so uh, as Piot mentioned, uh, we currently are integrated with the GitLab, but in the future, uh, we are planning to extend this list uh, for sure for uh, GitHub, maybe uh, for the pure uh, Git, but yeah, this is the outgoing work. Uh, so to access uh, access uh, the, the GitLab, we need to have two uh, secrets. The first one is uh, uh, API <coughs> access token. Uh, this uh, sec secret is uh, uh, required to uh, be able to read uh, any information about the model uh, model version and model uh, branches. Uh, so uh, the only uh, permission which is needed uh, here is a read API uh, role. Of course, you can uh, add some expires uh, to this uh, secret if needed. Uh, so this is the first uh, uh, secret which uh, we need. The second one uh, is a <clears throat> download key. Uh, it's a, a key which allow us to clone uh, the repository on a, a Prometheus in, in the version specified by the, uh, by the user. The last, uh, last part of the configuration is the place where the uh, patient data and the pipeline, uh, pipeline uh, data should be stored. So uh, currently we are supporting two, uh, two storages right now, uh, the Prometheus uh, uh, storage and uh, WebDAV uh, repositories. Uh, so basically uh, WebDAV was uh, added to the model execution environment, NESCO Web Overall project. And right now we are basically uh, focusing on uh, Prometheus. That's why uh, the Prometheus storage was added here. Uh, so <clears throat> after you click the save button, uh, you can see that the new organization, uh, new organization is created. You can access this organization. 
and as an author of this organization, you automatically are converted into this organization administrator. So right now, everyone can uh, access to, uh, to this organization by using this dedicated subdomain. And uh, when they will access this, this URL, they will be asked if they want to join the organization. If they click yes, then the uh, appropriate mail is sent to, uh, to all the organization admins and they need to decide if the uh, user should be approved or denied. Uh, of course, there is a, sorry, there is a request from Marius to make the fonts larger. Is it possible to zoom, okay. zoom in the, the I can, I can try window a little bit? Okay, uh, a little bit <laughs> larger. Okay, so uh, this is also a view when you can uh, promote a normal user into uh, into the administrator or the supervisor. The, the supervisor is able to to approve uh, others, other user, but is not able to do any modification uh, of the pipeline. So. Uh, right now I will switch into the uh, demo organization when I have uh, a lot of elements already uh, prepared. So as you can see here, we have here two administrator and if you right now will join this organization, I will be able to accept you or deny. Uh, so <clears throat> before the organization can be used to start the calculation on HPC, uh, some elements need to be configured, uh, and I will right now uh, will go through uh, this this section briefly and show you what you can uh, configure here. So uh, the first element uh, is connected with the licenses. <coughs> uh, as uh, uh, Piot mentioned, uh, we are integrated here with the Prometheus and with the PL Grid infrastructure, and thanks to the uh, PL Grid infrastructure we have access to a lot of toolboxes, proprietary uh, toolboxes with required some licenses. For example, uh, there you have access to the ANSYS, to the MATLAB, and uh, a lot of other uh, toolboxes. Uh, the number of li licenses for these toolboxes, uh, unfortunately, is limited and shared among all the uh, PL Grid users, which is quite a big number. Um, so if you need some additional licenses, it's also possible to configure it inside the model execution environment. For example, in, in the uh, pre-match project, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, ANSI simulations. And for this dedicated project, we set up a dedicated licenses server for the ANSYS. And using uh, uh, this, uh, this view, you can uh, register this, uh, this, land, uh, this uh, license uh, inside the model execution environment. So this is quite simple. You need to provide uh, the name for, uh, for, uh, for this license. You need to provide uh, uh, <coughs> uh, validity uh, dates. And next, you need to provide uh, some, some credentials. Usually on HPC, you need to export some uh, environment variable to, uh, to make usage of the external licensing server. This is the case, for example, for the ANSYS. So, uh, here you can uh, define some server URL uh, and create uh, this license. Next, uh, the developer of the pipeline step will be able to request this license and model execution environment will configure the environment uh, in automatic way for, uh, for, for, for the execution of this, uh, of this step. Uh, the second element will need to be de uh, defined in, uh, in model execution environment is a grant. Uh, so uh, in the PL grid infrastructure, all the calculation need to be started uh, in the scope of computational grant. Uh, the computational grant is uh, is something when you uh, negotiating with the PL grid how many resources uh, should be allowed to concrete group of researchers to concrete uh, research in defined period of time. Uh, so uh, you can negotiate the new computational grant by clicking this uh, blue button. And after the negotiation phase is finished, you can register this grant inside the, the, the model execution environment. So for example, I will here uh, create a demo grant. Uh, and uh, here you can select what kind of resources uh, are, are available in, uh, in the scope of this computational grant. So currently uh, uh, in the PL grid, you can request uh, access to the pure CPU or access to the GPU's card. 
Uh, so we can select which resources are uh, available and then uh, the model execution environment can choose the most appropriate uh, uh, computational grant for, uh, for your calculation. Of course, you need to provide some, some validity date. Uh, I will try to do some uh, outdated expired uh, grant to see the difference. Uh, <clears throat> so I, right now I created an outdated, ver uh, ver uh, outdated grant. So as you can see, the, uh, the model execution environment can uh, decide uh, what kind of grants are currently active and present this information to the user who is starting the application. So it's not a big deal, but uh, it's, uh, it simplifies the way how the uh, end user, the researcher who wants to do uh, uh, research and not focus on the technical part, can uh, his work can be simplified. Uh, so next uh, element uh, is a data file type. Uh, this also is an element uh, Piotr already mentioned. Uh, if we have uh, more than one uh, step in, in the pipeline, uh, more than one calculation is start, should be started, uh, then we need to provide a way to connect these two elements together. So uh, the main idea of the model execution and environment is to base uh, on, on the uh, required input files. Uh, so the data, data file type is a representation of concrete type of uh, file, uh, which, is, which can be requested by the calculation. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, let's let's see it in action. So uh, here uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, give a unique uh, name for uh, for the data file type. You can provide some uh, some uh, name, some user description, and uh, a file uh, pattern uh, for for this data file type. Uh, so using this pattern, we are uh, constantly checking with the patient. Uh, input directories and the pipeline input and output directories and uh, we are trying to apply these patterns. If we discover that some file uh, uh, is, uh, is connected with this pattern, then we assign this type to, uh, to concrete file and using this uh, technique, the model execution environment is able to uh, distinguish which uh, calculation can be started uh, on HPC. Uh, so the calculation itself, uh, we are calling this the pipeline step. Uh, so uh, this, an, uh, this is an element basic building block uh, for, for the calculations uh, starting on HPC. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, let's open uh, one of the steps. So right now I opened uh, the step which is responsible for sol sorting, uh, sorting uh, numbers. Uh, so I can give some names and user, user description. And uh, the next most important uh, element here is uh, the reference to the repository where the source code or the executable of the, uh, of the calculation is stored. Uh, so right now we can, uh, sorry for that, we can uh, try to, uh, to see this repository. So as you can see, this, uh, this link uh, is to, to the GitLab repository when we have a set of files. Uh, these files are versioned by using the Git itself. Uh, so we are able to select concrete version of the model which should be started on Prometheus. Uh, the next element we need to be uh, give, uh, given here is the name of the uh, Slurm starting script template. Uh, so uh, when we are talking about the HPC uh, running a cal uh, calculation on HPC, uh, the H HPC usually have some queuing system. So you are just submitting uh, a, a job to the queuing system with some requirements. So for example, what kind of resources you, you, you need, how many uh, computational nodes uh, are requested, how many C uh, CPUs, how many memory, uh, and all these elements are defined inside the Sloan starting script. So uh, let's take a look into the script. Uh, so we were looking at the sort uh, job. So let's uh, take a look into this, uh, this, this uh, uh, <clears throat> template. So this, this file is quite simple. So at the beginning, uh, we can split uh, uh, it into the two parts. Uh, the, at the bottom, uh, at the top of this uh, file, you can see the 
specification of the resources which are needed to start this calculation. So here we can uh, we can say how many computational nodes are requested, uh, how many uh, CPUs. Uh, what's more, uh, here we can uh, give an information in the scope of which grant this calculation should be started. So as you can see here, we have a quite uh, strange element here. Uh, so this is uh, a part of our uh, template uh, helper, which allow us to convert this template into, uh, into a uh, Slurm starting script. So when user will start a calculation and you will see it in action in a minute, uh, he will be forced to select a valid uh, computational grant and this computational grant, the name of this computational grant will be injected here in automatic way. Uh, so next, uh, we, uh, after defining this metadata, we can provide uh, a, a, a script which will start the, the, the calculation. And here we also have some, uh, some uh, helper methods which allow us to uh, make the, the script uh, dynamic and uh, user-friendly, we can say. So the first, uh, first element uh, is a tag which is called the clone repo. Uh, this, uh, this element allow us to clone the repository, the source code of the model uh, on the Prometheus in the verse, version specific, uh, specified by, uh, by the user. Uh, and next we have two helpers, stage in and stage out, which allow us to uh, upload and download uh, uh, file to the Prometheus from the model execution environment in easy way. So, here you just need to uh, say that uh, you require the demo numbers, data file type, and the model execution environment in automatic way will try to, uh, to, to, to check if this if file is already in place and only then will allow user to start, uh, start this calculation. <clears throat> so let's uh, come back to the model execution environment. The next element which need to be provided by the administrator while configuring the uh, computational step uh, is uh, uh, to give uh, an information what kind of resources are, are needed uh, uh, by, uh, by, this, uh, by, this uh, by this computation. So uh, here you can select if the pure CPU is required or you require the GPU uh, cards. Uh, next, you need uh, administrator need to provide uh, a list of uh, required inputs. So this is the place when you are defining the requirements of the calculations. And at the end, uh, the administrator can define some dynamic fields uh, which can be injected into uh, into the <clears throat> into the script. So, uh, for example, uh, here. Uh, we, uh, we have the select parameters which allow user to select what kind of sorting method uh, should, be, should be used while starting this, uh, this, uh, this calculation. And I can uh, show you also, this is in the parameters branch of the model, how this uh, can be injected into the script. We have also a value of helper which allow you to, to inject the value selected by the user in easy way to, uh, to the script. So after, after the calculation is uh, defined, uh, we can define uh, a pipeline flow. So the pipeline flow defines uh, what kind of set of calculations should be started uh, on a patient data. So let's try to create uh, a demo uh, pipeline flow. Uh, here, I, uh, the administrator only needs to uh, say what kind of calculation should be, start, uh, should be started. So we'll try to uh, generate numbers at the beginning. Next, we'll try to sort the numbers and at the end, uh, generate some, uh, some, uh, some animation. <clears throat> so this is the only elements which are needed to be configured by the administrator. And now the normal uh, user of the model execution environment can start work, can start uh, running application on the patient data. So the most important part for the normal user uh, is this part, the patient's uh, part. And as Piotr already mentioned, uh, the, 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 the patient is only an abstraction. Here can be anything which can be um, uh, can be interested to, to run a calculation on. Uh, so uh, Let's try to create uh, a new case here. 
so the only uh, thing you need to provide here is uh, some unique uh, case number. Uh, and uh, by clicking the register button, uh, we are creating a dedicated uh, space on a Prometheus where the patient data uh, uh, will be stored. So here we can uh, upload some, uh, <clears throat> some, some files. So for example, I will upload some, some example, example screenshot. Of course, we can uh, download it. Uh, also here, uh, and see, uh, see, see it uh, on screen, yeah. Uh, and underneath, uh, we are contacting the, the HPC and transferring the file there, uh, but the normal user don't have to have this knowledge how to transfer the file to the HPC. Uh, this is the responsibility of the uh, model execution environment to do this uh, for, for, for the user. Uh, so uh, the patient input directory, uh, is shared among all the calculation started. Uh, so all this pipeline started for this concrete, uh, concrete uh, patient. So right now let's, uh, let's try to uh, create a new, new pipeline for this, uh, this, this, this uh, case. Uh, and let's uh, select the demo uh, pipeline flow we, we created uh, uh, before. Let's name it. Uh, next, we need to select the mode in which this pipeline will be started. So uh, currently we have two, two possibilities, the automatic uh, way and the manual way. Uh, the automatic uh, pipeline uh, gives the power to the model execution environment to monitor the input and outputs directory and discover if the required input files are present and, and then the model execution environment will start the calculation in the automatic way. So let's try to run something like this. Uh, so as you can see this uh, here, we got the free pipeline step, which we'll need right now to configure. So we need to select what kind of uh, version of the model uh, will be uh, starting. Next, we need to select uh, the valid uh, computational grasp. As you can see here, uh, I defined uh, outdated expired uh, pipeline uh, uh, grant. And this, this expired uh, grant is not present here on the list. So the model execution environment only shows the valid uh, uh, grants uh, and simplify the work of the, uh, of the researchers. So next uh, we need to provide some uh, uh, custom parameters. So uh, in this case, so we'll, we'll be just giving the information that only six numbers should be generated. And next so we have the sort number step when we also need to select the number uh, version of the model we need to select the grant and uh, we need to select uh, the sorting method uh, also this is a, a dedicated parameters injected into the uh, slow starting script we, we also have a third uh, uh, step uh, but i will leave it blank uh, for now so uh, the first uh, pipeline step uh, does not require any uh, any uh, any uh, inputs, so that's why it can be started in automatic way right now. Uh, the second step requires uh, that the first step uh, will generate some uh, some uh, some file with with the number. So that's why this step cannot be started yet. Uh, the first step, the icon here is a little bit different. It means that this step is not configured yet and cannot be started until uh, required input files are present and until uh, the uh, step is uh, configured. So uh, let's configure this step. And right now the, the model execution environment can start it in automatic way. So as you can see, the, the second uh, step is already uh, started. And after this, uh, uh, we'll finish the third uh, step will start. Uh, and right now, uh, very uh, briefly, let's try to create uh, a second, uh, second uh, pipeline. Uh, but right now we'll try to create a manual, uh, manual pipeline. As you can see, you can, uh, can't uh, configure uh, here the pipelines. You only see a list of, uh, of the pipeline steps, which uh, will be started on this uh, uh, pipeline. Uh, the reason is quite simple. This is, the, uh, this is the type of the pipeline which gives the power to the user. So uh, the user need to click the run button to start the calculation. 
so yeah, we can configure this uh, pipeline here. We can provide some uh, some uh, parameters. Uh, we can start the calculation. The difference between the manual uh, pipeline and the automatic one is that after start uh, after the calculation is started, the user is able to abort this calculation. Uh, so I can stop it. Uh, I can uh, change some parameters and uh, restart uh, restart the calculation once again. Of course, uh, this uh, this uh, pipeline mode also are checking if the calculation can be started. So we are checking if the required input files are already already in place. Uh, so as you can see, the demo pipeline is uh, already finished. Uh, it was quite uh, simple uh, example, but yeah, it uh, produced uh, three outputs. Uh, so we can uh, we can download the result here, so we can see uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, numbers are, are generated. Uh, we can uh, we can see the the, the, the plot uh, which was uh, uh, generated in the first step. And the last element I would like you uh, to show you uh, is the comparison tool, uh, which is already built in into the model execution environment. So if you uh, started uh, two or more pipelines on the patient data and provide some different parameters or use a different uh, version of the model, then you have a possibilities to compare the results. So uh, you, <clears throat> you can click to, uh, to, uh, to pipelines and then you uh, will see the dedicated uh, view uh, when the comparison is shown. Uh, so at the top of the page, you can see what kind of uh, model version were used uh, and what uh, parameters were given to concrete steps. So for example, here you can see that we use the same uh, model version, but we provide a different uh, different parameters, different sorting method what's used in uh, in this uh, in this uh, in, in the first step was uh, used the bubble sum in in the second insertion sort. So that's the one possibility. And the second uh, possibility is to compare uh, the pipelines which were started from different model versions. So as you can see here, uh, this first step uh, and first pipeline use the insertion sort model version. The, the, the second pipeline use the bubble sort. So if you click this, uh, this link, you are automatically redirected into the GitLab when you can see the difference between the models. So this simplified the way how to, to, to see, see what, uh, what are the difference in the calculation started, uh, started for the, uh, on the patient data. Uh, so at the end, I would like uh, to show you the, uh, the model execution environment in action for the Airvalve project. Uh, uh, so uh, the Airvalve project was the first project where the the, uh, the model execution uh, environment was created, and uh, it was dealing with the heart disease. Uh, so simply, we were working on the three uh, D images of the uh, of the heart running a set of calculations. So as you can see here, we were running the segmentation. Next, we were running the CFD simulation, parameter optimization, uncertainty analysis. Uh, there were also a different uh, type of pipelines where the uh, <clears throat> ROM execution was, were performed. Of course, I'm not the medical person. Uh, I can also only show you uh, some images, uh, but uh, the Krzysiek uh, Czechow is, uh, is here. Uh, and if you are interested, I believe he can answer all uh, the question uh, connected with, with the calculation started here because he was the uh, main author of most of the calculation which uh, are here. Uh, 